An Iraqi child is drawing bombers like those which nearly killed him. The bombs left his face swollen with fierce injuries, marks of angry pain. He draws the bombers, though his arm and some fingers were amputated. Now they're bandaged up, with three crayons firmly taped to the ends of his stumps. He draws bleak, black lines, chronicling his history. Who did this to me? They had many planes. They brought bombs to fit into each of their cruel planes. Why didn't they think of the people below? Who drove all these planes? One was called George Bush, and one was called Tony Blair, with his friend Campbell. They'd made good friends with lots of oil companies. They wanted your oil to get into power. They'd made friends with newspapers, who all said, yes, bomb Iraq. Rupert Murdoch, boss of News International, told 120 of his newspapers to write a leader, urging readers to support war. No one was immune. Even the Guardian, financed by Auto Trader, was saying, bomb, claiming that Gulf Wars were humanitarian wars. The simple cause, wrote the Guardian in a pre-Iraq war leader, at the end is just. And with the magic word, humanitarian, cunning PR could make the liberal media mouthpieces for war propaganda. There was a lifestyle to be supported by Iraq's cheap oil. So opinion formers in wine bars and clubs and in parliamentary tea rooms and in TV studios' hospitality suites, while not discussing their expenses or their mortgages or their fees or their cars or their lifestyles or their favourite restaurants or their children's private schools, would dip a toe in the zeitgeist and then bloviate about regime change like self-important sheep housing wolves. I mean, obviously, one has to get rid of Sudan, gassing his own people. It's a breach of international law, for heaven's sake. The man has rockets, chock full of sarin, VX, mustard gas, anthrax, you name it. Didn't you see the Evening Standard? Front page. They could all reach London in about 45 minutes flat, apparently, according to Tony. Tony, who in March 2002 received legal advice from the Foreign Office that an attack on Iraq was illegal under international law. Tony, who would make himself a stranger to all moral standards, save for the acquisition of wealth. And millions are now his, thanks to consent being manufactured by media gossips hovering round water coolers and by his craven civil servants, and thanks to missiles being launched. NATO's evil acupuncture that turned Iraqi skies orange. 1,690,903 Iraqi people were executed for the 9-11 crime that they never committed, but with which they were charged. Baghdad was floodlit by bombs, by bombs' continuous explosions, and in Iraq no one's health was improved. Just death from vile, airborne cancers, birth defects that impoverish nightmares, and amputations on an industrial scale. But the oil's easier to get at now, and Alan Greenspan, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, would admit that it is politically inconvenient to acknowledge what everyone knows. The Iraq War is largely about oil. Humanitarian, the Iraqi boy might query, and then ask, so they're happy now? Well, they're all very rich. Maybe they'd buy my drawing, the boy says. <laughs>